Hello and welcome to the Matt and Shane video game podcast, week, week four. four. Yeah, four. Cool. Yep. Getting tired of the show already. Yep, we're double, just, double episodes. Just about ready to retire, I think. Yeah, we've had our had a good stint at it. Had our ups, had our downs. But we're back. <laughs> <laughs> we're bringing we'll it back. <laughs> <laughs> we're bringing it to you this week. Yep. We've got all kinds of stuff to say. Yeah, we do, as always. Mm. Uh, now, Matt. Yes. As we like to start every episode. Yes. What have you bought or played this week? Um, well, I don't think I bought anything this week. Now that I think long and hard about it. Uh, That's cool. What, yeah. There's stuff I want to buy, Definitely. Uh, I definitely want to buy some PlayStation 2 games that I saw being sold like an hour's drive away from me. Yeah, that's right. For real cheap. I'm really thinking about going to do that and snagging about nine PlayStation games for 65 bucks. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Get to listen to some tunes on the way there and back? Yeah, I get to listen to this podcast Yeah. on the way in there and back because that's what I do when I drive places now. That's what you're allowed to listen to? Yeah, and just my audio too. Yeah, obviously. Like just my side of the audio. And you just pretend what I say in between. Yeah, I just pretend I'm talking to myself, actually. <laughs> that works. Yeah, it definitely does. I recommend everyone try it. Yeah, if you want. It's if anyone wants, show. It's like three shows in one. If anyone wants the uh, audio <laughs> by themselves. The Matt Early Audio. I can send hook, us an email. I can hook you up. Get it done. <laughs> um... So what games were in that? Or you not you don't want to let everyone know? To uh, there was a few. Let me think of the top of my head. The main ones that piqued my interest were Metal, Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3. Yep. We're, and they were going for 10 bucks each, which Ooh. I think is pretty good because in most uh, reseller markets or on eBay and stuff, you'd pay at least 30 bucks uh, Australian for one of those. And they looked like they were pretty good nick too. There weren't any stickers on them and shit. Yeah, we hate and stickers. You, yeah, and it was selling a whole bunch of other games for um, like five bucks. Oh, nice! Yeah, like uh, Devil May Cry one, uh, Splashdown, uh, a game called Summoner, which looked interesting. Mm. It was like five bucks. Virtua Fighter. Uh, I think there was some, uh, some Sky Odyssey. I think there was some um, dog fighting one as well. As in, like playing dog fighting, not actual dog fighting games. I don't think they'd let you. Play those kind of games. Yeah, well, but there was a whole heap, and so like you have to you have to weigh it up. Like, should I spend this money? Like, I can always get these. It's always, I should have never like looked for them in the first place. I always get bored and I go, oh, I'll just see what's around. Probably yeah. won't find anything good. Then you find something really good, and then there's like the time to go and get it because other people might snatch it up. Yeah, that's a tough Cause, thing. Because the wicked deal. So I'm thinking like. When I have time, which will be like next week sometime, uh, I'll message the guy and see if he's still got all the games I want. And if he uh, still has them, then it's fate and I'm meant to get them. Yes. And then I'll make the drive. Yeah. That's, that's the tough thing about buying secondhand is... Uh, Hopefully it comes out before um, I go and get them before this podcast comes out. Yeah. So people don't hear it and then to go snipe my games. <laughs> You'll have to message him and be like, like, hey, can I pick up on Wednesday? And then he's at least more willing to hold them. But I've had a, some. Mm. I've had once where I was like, I was asking, like, oh, can I pick it up in like two days from now? And they're like, yeah, that's cool. I got a message the next day, being like, hey, just making sure you're still coming because I've already got someone else interested. And I'm like, ah, oh. so I had to like make sure that you're on it. Buying games is like, how do you like to do it these days? Like, because you can either do it like in store at a reseller. Uh, out of a classified like Gumtree or uh, online shopping, a reseller like eBay or something like that? Uh, I I normally do a bit of a looking around. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would prefer, I normally prefer to buy on price, but the only thing I do hate about uh, eBay is that if they're shipping it, you don't get a chance to actually look at it. Yeah, you like to hold the stuff and like see it. Yeah, especially if it's a game you're spending more than like $10 on. Um, yeah. You like to make sure it's in, if it's worth 
you know, if it's actually worth more, then um, you like to make sure mm-hmm. it's in good condition. Where with, uh, but the only awkward thing I found with Gumtree is like, I've driven like an hour once to pick up a game mm-hmm. and it was a DS game and I've gotten there and I'm like, looked at it and then I've opened up and the cartridge worked, but like the sticker was peeling. Oh yeah. Well, you can just make a new sticker. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, I've driven it all this way. I'm not going to say no. Like it's, yeah. it's too late because I've already It's driven. more of an investment, I think. Yeah. Not yeah. only in like the, the amount you have to drive, but you have to deal with these people as well. Yeah, and that's and like it's always an awkward thing. It's just it's just it's awkward. It is, yeah. I I the some like, more awkward than others. Yeah, I like remember the, the back and forth is interesting and like trying to talk to them friendly so they don't hate you. Yeah, what you're gonna say? But also like you're essentially a stranger to these people, and yeah. you are, and it's, it goes both ways, you know. But yeah, like so, most of the time, I just have like a pretty like standard. Uh, like you show up to the house, they knock on the door, they show up to the door, you're like, these are the games you wanted, like, yeah, here's the money, yep. these are all good, this is all good, yep, see you, bye, never see you again. Yeah. Drive away. But like, it always seems to be when there's dogs involved, it gets Ooh. a bit strange, like they come up in Yaffature and stuff. And I've I've never had that. I have had once where I was picking up some PS2 games on a, mm-hmm. it was off a Facebook group uh, purchase, Mm-hmm. And those are the ones I was picking up for you as well that day in Townsville. Yeah, and, um, that's right. And I got to the guy's house and like he came downstairs and I was having. I'm like, oh cool, can I just check the games? Like I always try to make sure. I send him a message like before and say, hey, just wanting to let you know, I want to check the games before buying. What are you checking? I just make sure the manual's there, the disc isn't scratched, and the case is all right. So I'm like, all, going, all the game, all the discs going to be scratched a little. Though. A little bit, but not like I want to make sure it's not unplayable. Yeah. Um, so then I, I was I was like sitting in this I was in this guy's driveway. I had the games like on the ground. Mm-hmm. And I'm like kneeling down, like going through them. And then like I, this this guy was probably maybe like eighteen, nineteen, I don't know. And then yeah. like his mother comes out and his mum starts like talking to me while I'm like trying <laughs> to look through these games and I'm like, I just want to look what? and leave. Oh just like random stuff and like she's like, like what? <laughs> well she was like they oh came out and was like, Oh uh, my my daughter loves your hair and I'm like, is that <laughs> I have longish hair, and I'm like, I'm like, thank you. I'm just trying to look through these games, and then because she was talking at her, I couldn't, I couldn't be rude, and like not look up and like, like. Was the like daughter this. there? Did you see? Yeah, yeah, they were all there. They all came out while I was like trying to buy these games, and I'm like, uh. Okay. So I, was, I was trying to like look through the games as well as talk to them and acknowledge them, and then it made the process go from like five minutes to like fifteen minutes of like. Yeah. Um, oh my, oh. So that was a great time. Mm. Um, That's a good story. I've got a good story too. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, like when I was talking about dogs, there's two instances where I've had with dogs. One was like pretty short, so that was okay. Yeah. That was when I wanted to buy that um that Game Boy Color battery plate. Oh, the battery cover, yeah. Yeah, and that's just like a weird thing to like show up to someone's house for, like five bucks, just like literally the battery cover yeah or a green game boy color because i have a green game boy color but like as a kid i lost the battery cover for it and lo and behold i found someone selling just the fucking green battery cover which is crazy enough he said make me an offer i said five bucks which is probably a little bit high but whatever i just it's weird because five dollars seems like not much when it comes to making something an offer yeah but it's if you offered anything less you'd feel like it'd say no anyway yeah, and like I don't know, to make it a whole five bucks, that like that's yeah. a note, man. So like that really makes the trip worthwhile, you know. Like you feel like you're doing something important. Yeah. And it was I don't know. He just showed up. He was all not wearing a shirt, and he had a little dog that was barking at me and stuff. And I just felt really like lame buying this <laughs> battery cover off this guy. But I was happy I got it. Yeah, it's it's those sorts of things. It's the things you. You need, mm. like, in, and you don't realize people will sell, but then when they sell them, you kind of go to pick them up and you feel... Where else am I going to get one of those, you know? Yeah. That's such a good pickup for me, I feel, anyway. Yeah, like, you feel weird sometimes, like, going to these people's houses and, like, even though they're the ones selling it, you still yeah. think that they're going to think you're lame for wanting they're, it. They're really weary of you, like, it's... And, like, have you ever bought something off a, uh, off a girl? 
and like the boyfriend like lingers in the back like with a baseball bat <laughs> not particular no no one's ever like i've never seen anyone with a baseball bat but you know they stay in there they're like make sure and like you could fully understand that you've got some complete rando yeah I coming mean, to your house buying something off your off oh. your girlfriend I, yeah i've I've never had that. I have bought something off a female, but I, I don't know if she had a girlfriend. It was in, we met in like a public, boyfriend. You mean? A public, sorry, a boyfriend. We met like or a, a girlfriend. Oh well, yeah, we met in Either a public fine. place. So I guess it was. Oh least, yeah, well, where there's lots of people. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's. I feel a little bit better about meeting yeah. somewhere than meeting at a house. Like I've done a pickup in like a car park once as well. Have you ever, have you ever been the seller in this situation? Because I haven't. I think I'm always buying stuff. On. I've yeah, I've never. I've never wanted to sell anything of mine, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, so, no, I haven't. So One time, um, me and Jesse went and bought some GameCube controllers. Mm. And it was, I don't think we knew we were dealing with a, a girl until she answered the door. Oh. But, like, it was two of us showing up. And I think it was, she was only dealing with me like, oh, yeah. with the messaging. And then, like, right before I showed up, I was just like, oh, yeah, me and my buddy are coming around. Oh, shit. To come get it. But she was really nice. Yeah. And those are some sweet GameCube controllers as well. So. Nice. But, yeah, the worst time I ever had, which I look back on kind of fondly now because it was a funny experience. Yeah. Did I ever tell the story of how I got my PlayStation 3? No, that was a while ago too. That was, yeah, oh, two years ago-ish now. Yeah. But I wanted a PlayStation 3, and I found a sweet deal on Gumtree. It was uh, the slim model. I'm not sure how big the hard drive was, but, you know, like a big enough one, like a 60 at least yeah. gig hard drive. Well, or maybe sl- it was 160. I don't know. Like I thought the slims were 240 or 500. Like some big, yeah. some big fucking hard drive. I was like, yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Came with the HDMI uh, cable power supply, two controllers. One was a third party, and one ended up having, like, the second analog stick, like, swivels in place. It's not locked. Oh. But, no, no, second hand. And it came yeah. with Grand Theft Auto V and Black Ops 2. So, I was pretty happy with that. Yeah. 200 the lot, I think. So, um, I had to drive to this part of town where I'd never driven before. I was just talking to this guy, like, yeah, yeah, I finished work. Like, I'm over, like, come and I got the money. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. So, I like, drive to the dude's address where he says, and I think I find it. I'm always really bad with, like, finding the actual houses. Oh, yeah. When I went to go pick up the Game Boy battery thing, I like parked all the way down this hill and I had to climb all the way up to the top of this hill. Oh no! In the middle of suburbia, looking like some some weirdo. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, this guy's house, which I did narrow it down to being his house, had this gigantic fence around it, like this huge <laughs> fence, and you can see into into like where the driveway is, and yeah. there's just all these plants everywhere, like I don't know, like palm trees and like i don't know hibiscuses what what have you like just a, like a forest in the front yard yeah like this little forest man and like uh you know i was like oh this looks like a drug dealer's house or something like that yeah i don't think he was actually a drug dealer i thought it was just a guy that like plants and stuff mm. and like nature and stuff because he had all these animals as well but anyway so i'm messaging and calling him and he's not answering or picking up so i'm just like loitering around this oh no this weird house just like what the fuck is going on Uh, eventually like messaged me and says oh yeah i was just having a shower because i just came home from work i'll let you in now and he comes and he um comes out to the to the front of the uh the gate where the driveway is yep and like opens it up and there's a friendly guy's like oh yeah hey yeah the um stuff's just at the front door so I have to walk up there and like there's just plants everywhere like <laughs> and as soon as he opens up the door he's got two um I guess they're like bulldogs but like little dogs like that and they just and I was just wearing thongs because you know casual yeah. gum tree trip they just like run over to me and just start licking my feet oh no like slobbering all over them oh no but they they were cute but it was gross so I was just like oh <laughs> <laughs> Just like, hey, little dog, so I'm glad you're not biting me, but come on. Yeah. And he's like, all right. He's, he's like, oh, don't do that, dog. Uh-huh. And, of course, I'm not going to listen to him. Yeah. So we walk up to to uh, the front porch. And because of all the plants, you can't just walk, like, straight there. You have to walk up the driveway and then, like, past the garage. Like on a predetermined path. 
Yeah, like that's it. oh, it's like a linear path because <laughs> everywhere else has got plants and you can't walk past them. It's a game in itself. This yeah, it was, it was, and I've got these dogs licking my feet constantly, even while I'm walking. They're still going at the feet. <laughs> <laughs> and then the best part was, the guy's garage is decked out with a fucking aviary, like a bird aviary. Oh my god! There is like this huge, like half a garage. No, and it made like a quarter of a full two car garage. This yeah. big birdcage is just full with parrots and shit. Holy crap. And they are just screeching and screeching. <laughs> and it was like, it was like that kind of high volume, like just because you had to walk past it. And they were going off because the stranger is walking fast. Yeah, yeah. And it was the kind of high pitched screeching that just like, you know, you can feel it right in your ear and you're like, oh, that's like damaging my ear a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Wow. While the dogs are licking my feet. And I walk. <laughs> Walk up to the porch. He's like, yeah, it's the birds. And yeah, oh, go away, dogs. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, he's uh, got the stuff. Like, you can have a look through it. There's this and that, blah, blah, blah. Pretty normal transaction. Yep. Give him the cash. See you, mate. Thanks, see you. It was like real awkward goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dogs are still licking my feet. <laughs> the birds are still screeching. Oh, my God. It lets me out of the gate and then shuts it behind me. And then that was it. Wow. And then I drove home and played uh, GTA. Wow. Maybe he's trying to like actually build like a a forest in his house and he's just going to let all the birds free. Yeah, I should have asked what he did for a job. Yeah, actually. He seemed like a laborer kind of dude. Okay, but he just it has is, an obsession with trees and birds. He's mad chill. Like maybe that's his girlfriend's bird. I don't know. Like that's the thing. These people mm. are an enigma because you just – and you're in their life. For five minutes and then you're gone forever. I'm never going to see this person ever again. Yeah. I'm yeah, never yeah. going to know. Which I'm these never going to know about. Yeah. Um, but do I really want to know? Or do I just want my PlayStation and just Yeah, that's leave? true. So to answer your question, Shane, no, I didn't buy anything this week. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, one thing I do have to ask, though, with when you're buying like a console, is do you yeah. have the, the, the feeling that you want to see it working before you walk yeah, off? Yeah, you do. The- but uh, in... That's the only time I've really bought a console in yep. that way. So I did not want to stick around. Fair enough, fair enough. He told me that like, oh yeah, the reason I'm selling is because I got a PlayStation 4, so I don't need a 3 anymore. Yeah. And like the look of it, it looked in really good nick and it had all the cables there. So I'm like, mm, okay. Fair enough. Nice. At least it works. Still, if it was still any- working to this day. Yeah. If it was anything like, if it was a 360 or anything older than that, I would want to see if it works because 360 is a fuck, so you have to yeah. make sure they work. But slim PlayStation 3s are pretty good. Like, pretty good. And you've got I've the had... second, the, so there's three PlayStation 3s ever released. You've got the second one, the first yeah. one, not the new slim. I think so. Yeah. It's never given me any trouble. To, like I said, just that the controller has that analog stick problem with it. Yeah. But that's fine. That doesn't even affect anything. So, yeah, uh, stuff I've been playing. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, mostly, like, I wanted to play Master of Orion, but, like, that's the kind of game where it's, like, uh, I want to set aside, like, multiple hours at yeah. a time to play that, and I didn't have that. So, like, I started my new game and, like, I had a really sweet start, like, just got all these planets in a straight line, which is good in yeah. that game. Yeah, I know so nothing I'm, about this game. I'm, so. I'm, I'm keen to sit down and, like... I would like to see this. To get heaps done on it. Yeah, I'll show it to you sometime. Um... And then I found on Steam there's this game going to come out next month called uh, Stel- Stellaris. Remember me trying to say it last night? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's basically like a 2016 uh, space for, um, 4X game. Yeah. So like like a Master of Orion with like sweet new graphics and it's made by Paradox. So it might be good. It might be bad. It costs a lot of money. So I'm just keeping an eye on it so far. See if the reviews are good. So one question I have as well about that is, yeah, why not try the new Master of Orion? Considering it should be the exact same kind of game, or you the just one that came out this year? Yeah, yeah, it was like I don't think it's by the same people. I oh, think it okay. was made by some Russian devs. As like these things happen, yeah. Like same with Personal Three, Russian devs, and look how that turned out, you know? Yeah, true. So, and then, uh, and like I've still got all of. Master of Orion 1 and Master of Orion 2 to play, you know, so True. I'm not going wanting for a um, 4X game, but I like this. Yeah. It piqued my interest because it was shiny and new. 
Fair enough. And everything they were seeing in the videos like reminded me of Master of, or- of Orion. Which is always good. Yeah. Um, and then I've been playing Bully still. Oh, uh, yeah. Red Dead still. Pokemon still. Uh, uh, the new game I picked up or started playing rather because I had this I bought this on a sale ages ago I never played it was um, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream which yeah. is a point and click game based on the short story by I'm going to say his name wrong but it's Harlan Ellis right or is it Harlan, Harlan Ellison I'm not sure I'm not but too sure he was a, a pretty well known sci-fi writer he wrote like a whole bunch yeah. of, of a couple of key episodes on original Star Trek and just like a whole bunch of sci-fi stories. And uh, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, which is a really long title. I hate saying it every... Yeah, it's a cool title, but it's so long. It's got a very interesting uh, like cover as well. Yeah, it's about... Well, I'm going to get this wrong, because I read the short story when it was years ago about um, these people... There's like an AI computer who like rules the world, but like he can't die, and he like takes these people into this group of survivors into the middle of the earth because everyone else like fucked off to the moon or something after he like took over or whatever. Yep. And, oh God, I'm getting this so wrong, I bet. But basically, <laughs> That's fine. they can't die or anything because he can just bring them back to life if they die or kill themselves or whatever. So right. basically, he tortures these people like to, just to amuse himself, really. Wow. And they try and find a way to defeat Am, the computer. And so in the game, uh, basically you pick one of the five characters and then they have their own little um, story where basically you just find out about the character. And it's weird and trippy because, like, it's these simulated realities that they have to work in. And it's, it's a really good game. I've done, I'm up to, I've done two character stories so far and now I'm in the middle of the third one, which I found really hard. Because okay. I don't play a lot of point-and-click games, to be honest with you. Yeah, I've I not played, played many. I played a few on CD-ROM when I was a kid, but those were like kitty ones, so like super easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I didn't realize it was... A, I've seen this game on Steam a couple yeah, times. Yeah, it goes on sale pretty frequently. Yeah, I didn't, didn't realize it was a point and click. Yeah, it is. And it's a pretty good one, I have to say. Like, it kind of makes me want to play more or that kind of thing. Well, yeah, got- I, really, I really like point and clicks where like... You have the options to, like, it's like a uh, walk to this walk to button or a talk to button or a swallow button or a use push give button. Yeah. And, like, I just like being, like, swallow the wall or something and they'll say something funny, like, how stupid that was, the suggestion to do. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And, like, yeah. ha, 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 they thought that people would do that, so that's what. Yeah, like, you've got the, um, you've even got, like, all the, the uh, Double Fine are doing all the re-releases of all of the old LucasArts games currently. Mm. So those to be. I've been watching. I watched a playthrough of Day of the Tentacle remastered, and it's okay. it's pretty funny. Yeah, Telltale's the one that does all the modern point and clicks, right? Uh, oh wait, they don't even do point and clicks anymore, do they? They do like no, they're mainly doing the um, Walking Dead like, yeah. story stuff now, and um, they're they're the ones who are very heavily influenced the whole episodic yeah <laughs> um, releases for better or worse. Yeah, I mean, it's most people would say it's worse when it comes to something like Hitman. I don't buy into it. Oh, yeah. I don't buy into it, but I wouldn't know because I never bought into it. So if it's good or bad. No, yeah. I mean, apparently they're really good. Hmm. I've heard that too, but... Yeah. But you can you can normally wait until um, until the whole like season of the yeah. episode is released and just buy them as one mm-hmm. rather than... And then play through start to finish rather than waiting every... Waiting half a year or however long it is between each episode. For real, yeah. So I would like some recommendations on some good essential point and clicks to play. So if you would like to send some in, please do. Mm. And I'll check them out. Uh, one last thing I've been playing, which I started playing last night, mm. which was a game called Robocraft, which is on Steam. Yes. It's free to play. And it's a hell of a lot of fun, <laughs> I tell you what. And uh, it's basically, you get like a robot. Um, you can have like, all different kinds too, like plane style ones, tank style ones, mech style ones. Yeah. So you mainly building a, style ones. You're building a vehicle, aren't you, mainly? Yeah, but when you start out, like I have, you don't really have super heaps access to like building whatever, you know. Yeah. So I've just been using like a, a tank style one because I like that one. Yeah. And there's all different game modes, and there's it's really easy to match up. I was playing with Jesse last night, and we were partied up. 
and we're doing a lot a, a lot of just straight team deathmatch to begin with. Yeah. And it's basically like you've got lasers or photon blasters or ion particle destroyers, what have you, whatever, a whole heap of weapons. And uh, you just like destroy the other robots on the enemy team and then try and capture their base. Yep. But the cool thing is like as you're like attacking, because like they're made of blocks, like yes. voxel kind of looking blocks, but the environments aren't don't look like that. So it's just the, the machines. Uh, as you like damage them, they like blow off parts of their blocks. Yeah. So you can actually end up like you can blow off someone's laser, you can blow off their wheels so they can't move and stuff, and then you finish them off. And That's so cool. Yeah, it's a really well done game. And I'm gonna keep playing that a bit. And, and you can completely customize your totally um, mm-hmm. craft thing as well. You just have to get you you uh, do matches and you get uh, RP. So like I don't know, like in game bucks, I yeah. suppose you'd call them. Uh, and then you buy blocks with that because you have like your like they're all shared. Yeah. So if you want these blocks, you have to like dismantle this one machine to get all those blocks and then you can use them on, on another thing oh okay yeah do you get what i'm saying so you can only have you have a bank of blocks yeah that's right and if you can you get more limit you your more. amount of uh, robo right. crafts you can build that's right so i haven't okay. explored too much into the the building and crafting of it yet because i don't have super duper access to it i want to like level up more before yeah. i try doing that but the ones that they give you like they're fine. You can like hang with anyone with those, That's and cool. like, but like some of the designs I've seen have been really cool, especially the planes. I, I, uh, when you start off, you don't really have access to flying stuff. Um, but yeah, I'd be really keen to like get that and make some planes and stuff because there's a whole stratagem to like, because uh, the way the mini map works is like you have to actually like spot them, yep. like press the button over them to like get them to show up on their mini map so your team oh, okay. knows where they are and stuff which is a really cool f- feature and you get XP for doing that I think the, they used to have something like that in Battlefield yeah right? that's right yeah just like that that's and cool. one more thing I'll say on that game is you can make these designs these designs for your robots and then you can put them on the the robot factory marketplace mm. so it's like your design and uh, people spend like the in game money on them so like, oh, this guy's got a really cool like tank. I'll spend five thousand robo credits mm. to get this one, and like that person actually gets those credits for that. Oh wow! Or a percentage of them anyway. I'm not sure, but something like that. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, so it gives you incentives incentive to make really good um, designs. Damn, that's cool. So with the um with the credits, what can you buy with those credits apart from other vehicles? You can like buy just blocks, blocks and stuff. Okay. Yeah. And when Which someone doesn't... when someone buys your vehicle, do they buy the vehicle and all of the blocks or they just buy like the schematics? That's a good question. Okay. I'm pretty sure... Oh, that's a really good question actually. But no, I'm not even going to say because I don't know. Yeah, fair enough. I'd like to hope that the, you get the blocks with it too, but I don't yeah. know. It remains to be seen. I'll tell you about it uh, after I play it a bit more. And yeah. after you play it a bit more with me because you are going yes. to do that. I would like to yeah, I'll play, play some this weekend. So yeah, that's me. Let's hear cool. about you. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um... I haven't bought anything really, um, apart from some small Steam games, but we're leaving mm-hmm. those off. Um, off the table? Yes, currently. Uh, I've been playing, so I haven't played much this week. I had a bit of a lazy week. Um, mm-hmm. but Which was a productive week. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I played quite a bit of Euro Truck Simulator 2 again. Very good. Always a fun time. I've been getting back into that because there's been some like some old YouTube series and some podcasts I've been wanting to watch. So mm-hmm. all I've done is fire them up and then chuck on the old Euro Truck Simulator mm-hmm. and it lets me kind of, you know, do both rather than just sitting there doing nothing and watching yeah. it. Um, so I've been having some fun with that, you know, building up my trucking company. I've got two people and two trucks employees it's employees yeah and i've got my truck cool. and i'm doing well i installed some um i had a look at the mod um which like one the mod uh like because i've got steam workshop so i mean yeah. have a look at the mod marketplace is what i meant to say. okay um and there's some pretty cool stuff on there like there's a lot of just like mm-hmm. paint jobs and small small stuff like that that mm-hmm. doesn't really matter but um i downloaded a realistic physics engine 
like more, <laughs> okay. more realistic physics and yeah. more traffic. Oh, more traffic, just what you want. Yeah, so now... Do like, they have like a no traffic mode as well? I didn't look, no. Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, but I, I like the idea of... Because there's, there's enough traffic to get in your way, mm-hmm. but it's it it's enough that you can kind of just ignore it most of the time. Yeah. Um, so I like the idea of having a bit more in the game so you can actually kind of see a lot more cars going around you, especially when you're driving on the highway. Most of the time it's just blank. Where at least yeah. now there's a few more cars and stuff driving past. Um, the only that's what I'd want though is like no cars, so I can just cruise. Yeah, it's, I, I mean it takes the realism out of it. I get a bit for me because yeah. I, I oh, like okay. I like. Have they put in like a uh, battle mode mod yet? No, no. That'd be cool. It would be, but I mean, like in a state seventy six, like shoot at them in there. That's uh, that would probably require a whole game engine remake though, some of like that. But um, nah, it's fine. Um. The realistic physics, though, has really been screwing me around because it, it's made braking a lot harder. Like, mm. So if I'm holding brake, the trail is pushing on my the back of my truck and I'm not stopping slowly. What do you play with? Uh, I use a Xbox controller. Because mm. uh, I don't Time have... To get a wheel. I would love a wheel. We all love a wheel. When oh, man. Um, so yeah, I'm, I've ever since it's on that model, I'm not sure if it's since it's on that model, I've just never really... Could be the fact there's more traffic, so I have to stop more. But I'm starting to rear end a lot more cars now. Oh, no. um, Even more than before. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's also like going up hills and stuff is like yeah, I've been a lot harder, and it a lot more like small little bumps really affect mm-hmm. your driving. So now, like if you go over a small bump, your whole cabin shakes around <laughs> and so it's that's great. I like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I'm liking. I'm liking. Is there a moon physics mod? Not yet, but maybe. Okay. You know yeah. what they really need to add to that game is, or maybe in the sequel or whatever, mm. is like the ability to get out of the truck. That's what a lot of people have said. Yeah. Um, and you can like go to a hotel and like sleep there and like smoke meth so you can drive all night or <laughs> like what have you. Like, yeah, I mean, that's what truck drivers do. Turn it in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'd be, they probably wouldn't want you walking around the whole map. But no. it'd be nice if maybe like if you stop off at like a fuel station or like a hotel yeah. or whatever within, you the, have like within a, the bounds of that building, you can you get You should out. have like a, a health meter, a sleep meter, a hunger meter, a piss meter, you know, like a so, yeah, like meth meter. Full, full realistic crank RP meter. <laughs> so you can so you actually have to like stop off at a fuel station, take a piss, have something to eat, yeah. have a sleep. Refill yeah. your truck, yeah. Smoke meth and yeah. then get driving again. Yeah, that's right. Get trucking. Keep on trucking, man. That'd be. It would be nice. It'd be. That would, would you not want that? That would be sick. I would like the. I would like something like probably hunger and. I would like to be able to move around and actually like inspect mm-hmm. my truck. That'd be awesome. Customize like, your interior cabin. You can already do that. Oh wow! I'll see, well, yeah. Shows what I know. What have you customized your cabin with? I, I haven't. Fuzzy mm-hmm. dice. Um. You can get them now. Disco ball? Um, a lot of that. So to get the, the the stuff the developer added before the workshop, you had to mm-hmm. buy the DLC for Ooh. cabin accessories. Ooh. And then you then had to buy the accessories in game. Yeah. But I, I think during, through the workshop, they have added cabin accessories. I haven't looked much at them though. Sick. So. Well, you we should get into it, man. Put like a microwave in there and stuff. <laughs> the... I've, but I, I was also watching some uh, some videos on VR with that game, and oh, yeah, man. I've seen videos of uh, Track IR with it, and I think I would like Track IR better than VR. But then again, I've used neither in real life, so I wouldn't really know. Yeah. But yes. Continue, please. Yeah, I'll just like I was watching and just being able to like fully look around your cabin and like and sit, you uh-huh. know, like you you feel a bit more. You feel quite limited with check uh, the mirrors. Yeah, you feel very limited with like the control stick. Do you do the parking in the Euro truck or do you let the game do it? Um, I have been doing the parking. If How do you do it? Do you like first person parking or? Yeah. I don't change camera. Yeah? yeah. Okay, good. I, right. I try and restrict myself. <laughs> the I'll the either. What? Full immersion, man. Yeah, I'll either not change camera or skip it. So what mm-hmm. I'll do is I'll I'll get there, I'll give it a go. If yeah. I've completely fucked it, I'll just be like, skip. 
I want, oh, yeah, I want to, because I like to say first person pretty much the whole time. You can only get better, I suppose. Yeah, but I've been but, doing quite well. Um, it's been no speeding fines. No, I've been getting a lot more uh, traffic light uh, fines because of the Ooh. whole like stopping. So I've been like going yeah, over okay. the line by like a meter, <sighs> and mm. instantly it just hammers you with a, a fine. It's a tough game. There's a steep. High skill ceiling for it is. Euro Truck Simulator, but, but you can really immerse. I yourself. think it should be the next Evo. Wow, but well, the Evo is just fighting. Yeah, let's put the battle mode. mode <laughs> in, obviously, multiplayer or trucker fights. Yeah. Wow. Truck fight. Yeah, that's what they should have added. Uh, Into the like, multiplayer, like a road rage mod or something like that. Where you, you know we've already put in that you can get out of the car. Like maybe you like rear end someone, you get out of the car and then you like beat them up and like smoke some meth and get back in your car. Just, and, <laughs> or you get in their car and drive away with their kids or something like that, you know. This just there's a, whole, like, there's just a whole world of opportunity out there for this game. It just sounds like Grand Theft Auto 5 now. Yeah, but with trucks. But you can get trucks in Grand Theft Auto 5. Yeah, but uh, yeah, shout out though. Okay, <laughs> um, so I've been playing that. And the other thing. Gotta find the middle ground. Yeah. The other thing It's a I, great game. Yes, it's an awesome game. Um, what do you listen to while you play that game? Um I've been watching Watching? Yeah. What that's not immersive. Yeah, it's fine. Um no. I've got two screens, it's fine. Um <sighs> I've been watching so we talked about music last week, but I've been watching um some podcasts. Schmusic. Like some c- this certain, one? certain video podcasts. Matt audio? No. Only? While um, you do Eurotra. Uh, <laughs> and talk to you like I would. Um, you could technically get this podcast in your in your copy of your truck with the the RSS feed. I'm pretty sure you can. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Well, so there you go. Any, any truckers Euro out truckers there? out there? Or American truckers? Now that that's out. Oh uh, yeah, I suppose. Um, but anyway, Check it out. going off your truck. Yeah, right now. stop talking about this game. It's been, been so long. Um, I also <laughs> fired up the Doom beta, the multiplayer oh, yes. beta. Yes. Yeah. I am having quite a bit of fun with really? the Doom multiplayer beta. Just yeah. how much fun exactly are we talking about here? Um, so I jumped in, and I jumped into a game into just team deathmatch, and mm-hmm. I was like, "This is so fun!" That's how much the the fun level was. That this is so fun <laughs> on a scale of one to. So you said that out loud. Or you thought it in your head. Uh, I think I may have said it out loud. I was like, "Wow!" Really. Um, <laughs> It's okay. There you have it. The only thing that annoys me is with the mul- the beta currently is you can't change graphic options at all. All you can change is resolution. Oh, and that's such a shame. You can change the anti-aliasing, but you can't turn it off. And you can turn on. Uh, I can't. And you can turn field of view and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so did you actually ever play the game, or did you just mess with the options and then turn it off? <laughs> no. I, this time I played it. Um, okay. So I wanted to turn the options down because my computer is a little old. Um, so I wanted to turn the graphic options down so it would run at a nice 60. Mm-hmm. But currently it runs between 60 and 30 just whenever the hell it wants to. Oh, okay. Um, but it looks it looks really nice. Like um, mm-hmm. It definitely runs smoother than I thought it would have from how it looked. Like mm-hmm. the Battlefield, new Battlefields had a similar feeling where it just it ran really smooth. Yeah. Um, the guns are really nice. Like I start, you start off with like an assault rifle kind of thing. Is what I do. Do they feel good? Like when you use them, like yeah, responsive, they, you know, they feel pretty good. Like the assault rifle is still, it's still like a science fictiony assault rifle. So yeah, it feels pretty nice. I went st- as soon as I could unlock. I went straight to the. I think I'm currently using the plasma rifle and the super shotgun. So you can actually mm-hmm. instead how of how many guns can you carry at once? You can only have two in this one. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, but what like, you, does it matter which two is it like a class, like a sidearm, or is it no? Well, that's the two whatever. That's the good thing. So you create your class. Grenades. Um, so you can have two weapons and a a uh, equipment slot. So you can have two of any yeah. weapons. Doesn't have to be primary or secondary. There is no yeah. real primary or secondary in this. So is there I'm a pistol in the game. No, not really? in, not okay. currently anyway. Uh, they could be in the normal release. And you've Early only weapons. got you've only got two maps as well in this. Any melee weapons? No. Okay. Not currently. Once and I said, so grenades are equipment. Yes, grenades. What uh, other kind of equipment is there? There's grenade, a self teleporter, so you can teleport yourself. I think mm-hmm. I've never used it. And there's a a health stealing grenade. So what it does oh, is yeah. you throw it out, and it will open up this big like dome, 
You know, yeah. anyone in that dome, it then kind of like sinks in and it will actually steal health and do damage to them. So you get the health? Yes. That's cool. Yeah. Um, is is this like a, a health bar and then armor? Yes. So there's a regen? No health regen. This nice. is, we're going back to like old first person shooter. I yeah. like it. The, it's actually the thing that I found weirdest is there's no for like health regen because I'm so used to it in games. <sighs> so I'll like... Uh, I, I like it I like it um, but okay, so I, I'm glad you said that um, so you know you're walking around mm. and um, you know you get you, you kill someone you, you're low on damage and then for some reason part of you just expects it's like that's fine I'll just walk it off you know and mm-hmm. you don't <laughs> so you have to go searching for health kits and armor kits around the map mm-hmm. um, it's, it's nice like that like I, I really like the whole health no health regen and armor um, and there's little armor shards and health shards, and then there's like big yeah. health and then full armor around the map. Um, so you're topping the scoreboard every game. I, I was imagine. I was getting like third, fourth on some ones. I wasn't nice. too bad. Um, so there's two game modes. There's team deathmatch and um, I forget what the other. It's pretty much capture the point. But yeah. what it does is the point actually moves around the map. So well, like. So there's a so in in a map there's a predetermined like path like a kind of a railroad looking like it there's no actual like railroad but it it puts out this like a trail it puts out like a trail around the map and then what happens is there's there's a zone and the zone is so wide you know it fits mm-hmm. you know quite big and that that actually slowly just moves along that path okay so it's not like it doesn't doesn't just blink from spot to spot or like no, actually moves it actually in real time. slowly moves around okay yeah. I like that I like that. it's nice yeah because it means that when it comes to trying to like uh, steal the point back, there's no like, there's a, no. Def- it's always different when you're stealing. I guess what I'm trying to say. So you can't yeah. just you can't just know exactly how to come into that point because mm-hmm. it's always different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really liking that. And team death match is obviously just team death match. Um, so there's you can play either one of those, or there's one called random where it will just it'll just swap. So I've just been doing the random one to get a bit of both. Yeah. So how's movement in it? Like, can you uh, like go pretty fast? Can you accelerate your speed and jump around like you can in Quake? And because it looks pretty quakey, like from what I've seen. So yeah, so it it semi reminds me of Quake Three Arena we used to play like in high school. Um, mm-hmm. But it's it's not as fast as Quake. Like it's still a bit bit toned. It reminds me a lot. Like playing it reminds me a lot of Halo um, okay. in the way you move. Um, I believe there is a sprint uh, mm-hmm. and I actually can't remember now because I've played I played a different game in between but um, you've got like a double jump thing so you can jump and then jump again jump again in the air yeah and then there's there's like a semi parkour system so like if there's like a ledge um, if you then jump up to that ledge and jump again he'll grab onto the ledge and pull himself up okay um, and it actually it can kind of do that naturally as well. So, like, if there's something that's close and you kind of run into it, he'll just quickly jump up, jump up over it. But also, mm-hmm. I found one thing which I'd love to play around with, but probably won't get time to. But when you're like on a platform, yeah, and or like a, a raised up area, mm-hmm. and you get towards the edge, um, I've actually had my character dip down on the edge, grab on, and grab back up. If I go too close and then back up again, like without even me realizing. But I like that because if you're trying to get away with someone, you can really like fuck with the head just by like dipping down and back up like all over the place. So I've wanted to like play with that, but it's a bit too hard a lot of time. Um, But yeah, the movement is really nice. Movement is really nice. The guns feel nice. Um, Mm -hmm. So there's- How long does the beta go for? uh, This whole weekend. So I think it ends tomorrow. Okay. So you think you've played enough of it to decide whether you drop fat dollars on the uh, release when it comes out? Um, Day one? I'd probably, I'd probably season pass. It wants it makes me feel like I want to play more of it, um, mm-hmm. but I haven't played a first person shooter in a while. It's made me want to play it mm-hmm. uh, for you know because all of them are getting a bit. Eh. Um, it's nice and the guns are really like nice because I you've got to nice. I go over them so you have got a assault rifle. Yeah, assault rifle does normal things. You got a super shotgun which is just like a it's a double shotgun like one shot reload one shot reload kind of thing or it shoots both barrels it's the super shotgun's really nice and satisfying as you would expect from a doom game mm-hmm. um 
You've then got a you've got like a sniper. I haven't used the sniper much. Um, you've got a pulse rifle, which mm-hmm. um, the cool thing is um, not all of them. So the secondary of each of them is different. So like assault, your, your secondary click is just like a zoom in. Shotgun is like a bit of a zoom in. Sniper is a zoom in. But the pulse, um, so normal shot is just like a boom, 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 boom. The second shot actually fires like a like a similar to like a um like a noob tube type thing um and it will fire that shot and it will land and like fi- light the area on fire mm, okay so your secondary shot on that is really nice so like an incendiary round yeah it's really cool because you can actually then like i've used it a lot for like point capturing or like firing around yeah. like if i know someone's there i'll like i'll kind of shoot the that out there so that when they walk through they like catch on fire then i can shoot mm-hmm. them more um, and then the last one is a laser rifle, which is just like a constant laser. You're shooting at them, mm-hmm. but the, the distance isn't that great, but the, um, it does quite a bit of damage. And it's got a secondary fire mode, which I can't really figure out because it doesn't tell you what any of this is, but the secondary fire looks like it does a laser, but it does a wider spread of damage, I think, but it uses your, it uses up your ammo a lot faster. Okay. Um, the weirdest thing in this is there's no reloading except for the shotgun. So no reloading. So with the assault rifle, you've got say 150 bullets, and that's all in one clip. So there's no reloading; it just uses. Oh, okay. Them. So yeah, it's, that's pretty um standard for like uh, for those for types of first person shooters. Yeah, I I re- it's really weird because I still press the reload button out of mm. habit. Like I'll shoot someone, kill someone, hit reload out of habit. Yeah, like why can't I reload? Why is my health not regenerating? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, but I really like it. It's really nice. Okay, so now I feel like I've played the whole game because you just explained like every single weapon to me. That's cool. And so the fact is it's nice. Yes. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Doom. Cool. Nice. Um, One question I wanted to ask you, Matt. Do you play... Many mobile games. No. Like on your phone, that is. No, not really. Oh, yeah. I think I kind of did back when I first got a smartphone and thought the idea was kind of cool. Mm. But uh, not these days, no. They're usually just like free-to-play shit. And like, I'm sure there is good games, but I haven't uh, bothered to go find them. Yeah, yeah. Because I found myself lately like realizing that... Uh, like. Probably- I'll just say probably like the closest thing you could get was like a port of an actual video game to mobile. Yeah, and you that's when you've wanted to look at it? Yeah. Fair enough. So you don't play anything like uh, Flappy Bird, uh, no. Temple Try- Run or anything? No, I tried. I've never played Temple Run or what's the new one? Candy Crush or whatever. Yeah. None of that really. Um I played a bit of Flappy Bird when it was like when it was know, controversial, yeah. And yeah. then I was like, oh yeah, that's okay. Mm. Um, I think the game that I played most on mobile, there was this driving arena driving game where like you would drive a car and it'd have like a laser or a rocket strapped to it and you'd have to kill the other guy. Oh yeah. Kill the other people in the thing. I can't even remember the name of it, but that's I would have spent a few hours playing that and that's about it. Fair enough, yeah. Because I found myself like, when you first get a smartphone, you're like, well, all these games and the app store is such a big place for games. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, I'm finding myself not playing any of them. No. Like I'll download some, I'll play them for like a couple of minutes and then they'll sit in a folder on my phone. And I'm, I'm always like wondering, like, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just interesting, I guess, to see. Because a lot of people do, like that's the only games they'll play or they're like constantly playing something on their phone but I yeah. found I found that I use my phone for like a social media device and that's it now like yeah, I'll play games com- every now and then I've got a computer and consoles and handhelds to play on I don't really need to d- use my phone for that yeah yeah the way I feel anyway but a lot of other people do and that's fine yeah like, I'm not one of those people like oh look at this person like playing on their phone like, oh somewhere. no yeah I mean the fact that people are embracing video games is awesome like just yeah uh, but just make sure they're actually video games and that there's like freeware like I don't know I suppose it's up to them if they want to like spend money on like Clash of Titans or whatever I mean it's definitely a great way to make money oh yeah <laughs> sure if you got the money to spend on making the game sure yeah 
Yeah, definitely. And I think it has helped a lot of like indie devs rise up as well. The guy who made Flappy Birds. Yeah, but even like the... the And the guy who made Angry Birds, which the thing about mobile games is like, especially with that one, is that like instead of playing mobile games, what I would do is I'd play browser games, which is like the same kind of level of quality in a game. Yeah. Like I go on Newgrounds a lot back in the day and play a whole bunch of Flash games and stuff. And you could get some really unique and cool ones and they're usually simple. Yeah, that's the thing. I guess that was my mobile gaming. Yeah, that's the thing, but I think like the there still is a bit more certain games there's a there's a bit more polish on some of the stuff that releases on mobile cuz it I think it gets released to a well, wider yeah, audience. Yeah, it's made in a different year. Well, that too, yes. Uh, That's what I would say. Yeah. I mean, Angry Birds is just a, a straight up copy of. There was this game on Newgrounds called uh, Crush the Castle, something like that. Whereas this exact same fucking thing as Angry Birds, but um, you would like send a catapult to destroy, it, knock over a castle, and there's like kings and shit inside the castle. Yeah. Exact same thing as Angry Birds, but like reskin. And the guy who made Crush the Castle gets nothing. The guy who makes Angry Birds, well, you've seen what Angry Birds has become. Yeah, yeah. But is... But was, you can't, you was, can't. It's not stealing, but no. it's, it's just like, oh, that's kind of shitty in its way. Was Angry you know, Birds implemented better, though? No, about the same. Okay. Was, it, those are both very simple games. Yeah. Angry Birds probably looks better because it's got that more cartoony style, so it appealed to young kids, which I mm. guess was the idea. mm no, it's got like TV show and stuff like that. A movie coming out, yeah. Merch everywhere, which is fair enough. Yeah. I, I'd be squeezing that puppy for all it's worth too. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Same with what? Uh, Mo, what a, Mohang? Mojang. Uh, yeah, I think it's Mohang. I get confused with that board game. Yeah, Mahjong. Yeah. <laughs> <Every time. laughs> yeah, because yeah, I'm like, I think... Pokemon Go is going to be one thing that probably makes us whip out our smartphones again. For yeah, games. okay, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, even though I was just thinking like, oh, did I get my email for the beta back yet? Yeah, um, I've been waiting. Um, still haven't known, heard nothing. That is something uh, I could get into. And also there was an article I read recently about PlayStations looking to start releasing... Yeah. Uh, I did, the article didn't reveal too much, but it was like they want to put stuff to do with their first-party... I- uh, IPs on smartphones so whether that means like a port of the actual game to a smartphone which I don't think would work mm. or just like a just like some sort of tie into the video game tie in game yeah it's going to be interesting to see what they do with their IP like it's definitely nothing that hasn't been done before didn't like, Nintendo say they wanted to start devving for do the same kind of thing well that's what Miitomo is it's their first app no, but it was stuff like, oh, yeah, there'll be a Legend of Zelda game on your mobile and yeah, this and that. That a came bit, out a while ago. They're a bit iffy about it. Like, they did... They're I'll in just talks say with fucking a, anything. <laughs> yeah, they're in talks with a uh, a mobile development studio, but no one mm-hmm. really knows what's happening no. fully because it's Nintendo. But yeah. it would be interesting, like, to see what PlayStation do. But, I mean, you've got stuff like, uh, like Prince of Persia and Assassin's mm-hmm. Creed and things like that have made their way to mobile with the separate games yeah, as like 2D side-scroller type games. Um, so well, it, Prince of Persia was a 2D side-scroller. So yeah, I'm at uh, Assassin's Creed. Um, yeah. Now, it'd be interesting to see if Sony just do that and get like Uncharted and make just another way to make money from that franchise. Yeah. Or they actually go, cool, let's port old games. Or they say, let's just make a new IP but on the mobile yeah. market I'm not really fucked on like uh, porting shit to phone like no it, I like what I Rockstar really have been doing like it's kind of interesting but I, I know you've bought them but you don't play them either do you because like the controls are all stupid like it's not yeah. these aren't games made with mobile in mind no so it suffers for that but um, I kind of like it when they do uh, like they'll have the game on a console, and then they'll make, like, a little uh, version of it for, uh, like, a handheld, I guess you'd say. Yeah. Like, remember when all the Harry Potter games were coming out? You'd have Harry Potter come out on, like, your PlayStation or your Xbox and whatever, and then you'd have, like, the Game Boy versions, and it'd be, like, the same tie-in, but it'd be, like, a completely different game. 
Because yeah. one would be like an action adventure game, and one would be like an RPG, you know. So. Yeah, I think I think they still do that for some franchises, but yeah, but Dark, my, Dark so. Void was a game that came out a while ago to like uh, mixed response. <laughs> I've seen that right off Steam, but like uh, they also had a uh, Dark Void Zero mm. come out on Steam as well, which is just like. If you check it out, it's like a, like completely. It's like the same kind of thing where it's like a different game, but it still ties into the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Those I find interesting. But back, back in like back back in our day, um, when mobile phones didn't, uh, yeah, so long ago. Yeah, like mobile phones weren't consoles. Back when mobile phones were made for making calls. Yeah. Um, you play Snake on a mobile phone. When they would release, played a few like, hours a, of Snake. There you go. There's one I've played a lot of. Yeah, true. Um, when you would like, uh, when they would release like a a, hand, a mobile game, mm-hmm. it would be on a Game Boy Advance, a Game mm-hmm. Boy Color, so, or PSP. Even. So it was a console made for gaming, which had gaming controls in mind as well. Mm-hmm. Where yeah, like ports to mobile, as you were saying, they're a bit. They don't feel right a lot of the time unless they yeah because you got to use touch controls unless they're developed start to finish with touch controls in mind like games that have been made for iOS and Android that's right they they feel natural to play but games that are ported always feel a bit iffy to me definitely yeah. I still buy all the Grand Theft Autos as you've said but only to be like oh that looks really pretty and it can run on my small little phone and then that's it yeah cool well, well tell us what you think. People yeah. Listen. Tell us if you still play uh, mobile gaming. Is it shit or is it legit? And what games you play, and that way we can yeah, check them out. I'm sure there's some good ones out there. I just don't know what they I, are. I check App Store every now and then. Like I've played stuff like, like uh, Endless Runner type things, and they're mm-hmm. nice because you can just jump in and play them. And obviously, my motorsport management um, stint. But that's about it. Yeah, I might just go back to playing Flash games. Yeah? Yeah. What kind um, of... What Flash games would you... Would you... What Flash games do you remember? Loving. Too many. Okay. We should do... Next week, we should do a thing where we just talk about a whole bunch of awesome Flash games that we used to play because there's okay. a lot. Yeah, through high school even. Yeah? That was fun. Around 05 and stuff. Anyway, so... Moving on to more newsy stuff now. Um, I was talking about last week how I recalled seeing something about a new System Shock game. Yep. Apparently they have announced that they're making a System Shock 3, but they haven't released like any details yet. So it's one of those we can't really confirm, deny type of things going on there. But Is it uh, the same developers? Uh, no. Okay. Different people. And like they're sort of like just taking ideas at the moment and like... Uh, Gauging like uh, whether people want like a VR kind of System Shock game or like oh okay, it's where they're gonna go with it and stuff. But the real news is uh, the System Shock One remake mm. that is in development, and they've had some screenshots come out so far, and they look really freaking good and like really like they've got like side by side comparisons with the actual first game and this new one, this new uh, remake. Reimagining, they call it, mm. coming out, and it looks pretty sweet to it me. It looks, it looks really pretty. Like, yeah, it semi reminds me of um, like the graphic style in Alien Isolation, which I yeah. really liked. It's a very, it's, it's a pretty similar setting where you're like on a, yeah, on a sort of spaceship. Where um, it's such a nice yourself. like sci-fi, like really, um. Mm. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, it looks really nice. It looks really nice. Mm-hmm. Now, I haven't played any System Shocks, so it'll be... I've played a bit of 2, which is the one that most people like. Yeah. When you talk about System Shock, they go, oh, yeah, System Shock 2. And I played a bit of it, and, like, I liked it, but I didn't give it enough time to get into it. Yeah. It's sort of, like, it is an old game. I think it came out in 99. Wow. And um, it's got, like, tank controls and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, and, like, pretty heavy, like, RP- like, super heavy RPG elements in it, which I like. Yeah. They say that like um, Biosh- the Bioshock series is supposed to be like the spiritual successes to System Shocks, but like System Shock is pretty different. I feel. Yeah, it looks a little more Deus Exy. Um, 
What do you mean by that? Like the the setting? Because yeah, it is. Because well, like a cyberpunk kind of setting. Even just like the way that the old games interface is like it looks a lot more um, a lot more inventory control and stuff like that. Or yeah, it is. Yeah, where like Bioshock is more about like guns and uh, augmentations, linear corridoring and yeah, shooting and stuff. Yeah, but Bioshock is good. I like the first one. I, I didn't play the second one, and I didn't really. See too much of Infinity. I've only really played Infinity. Um, oh my goodness! Yeah. Play the first one, man. Hey, yeah, I own them. I bought a double pack on oh PS3. Yeah, God. I know. Look, maybe Bioshock. Um, oh, that's what that's what I wanted to talk about real briefly as well. Um, oh yeah, very briefly. Very briefly is I played. I started playing Doom Three again because we oh, talked yes. about last week. So I've been was it nice to, or was it better than nice? Um, I had to do a bit of fiddling to get it working in t- uh, 16 by 9 1080 mm-hmm. um it's still scary it's still That's really good. dark and it's still really atmospheric it's nice system shock is pretty spooky too yeah it, it looks it's like it's got a very nice atmosphere to it and like you feel pretty uh, dreadful yeah when you play it and like judging from the screenshots that they've posted up which you can just google to find like yeah. looks super cool it Super really legit, nice. man. The detail, very good. So uh, I might try getting System Shock one because I've got two. But like, mm. or maybe I'll just wait for this new one to come out. Who knows? Yeah, I think I might wait till the new one. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, and maybe next week I'll play some Bioshock one between now and then, and I can talk about that next week. That would be nice. It'll be good. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, Next story is about, oh, well, Dark Souls 3 came out this week. Yep. Much to everyone's delight, but like me and Shane, because we don't play Dark Souls. No. But not because we don't want to. Well, I don't know about you, but... I, um... I... It's not a game that I've been, like, super interested in, because there's yeah. been, I guess you'd say, five in this series. So you've got three Dark Souls, you've got Bloodborne. Demon Souls and Bloodborne, and yeah. Demon Souls. Um, it's definitely something that I would like to try, but I've just never... Dipped my little toe yeah. into I think it's something that you either like take to really hardcore or you don't take to at all. Yeah. I can get why people like it because of the dark fantasy setting and like the challenge. That, and it does like a lot of things differently and it does a lot of things like really cool. Because mm. I watched Jesse play and it looked pretty fun to play. Yeah. But I've just never played it. so. No, but that has released this week. so. Yeah, we're going to have our friend uh, Ben come on after he's played it a bit and tell us what he thinks about it because he's like right into mm. the Souls series like yeah I like I remember when I've been watching them come out since they started coming out and like just never got into them and they've just become this huge fan base like oh, they're massive, over the yeah. years yeah so anyway this story is about uh, there's a board game oh yeah soon there'll be the TV show and the movie and the, <laughs> it's just like Angry Birds all over again man. oh wow <laughs> <laughs> Dark Souls is the new it's Angry Birds. Angry Birds, yeah. Um, so there's going to be a board game coming out because they, they, they've had the Kickstarter and I'm pretty sure there's no way that a Dark Souls board game isn't going to make the Kickstarter goal. Mm, I, I think it already has, right? I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it successfully launched. Oh, they had another game previously which the developers doing the current one. Yeah. It got kickstarted. So if that one can get kickstarted, this one definitely will. There's definitely. no doubt in my mind. This one will, and like that's, uh, I would, I would totally play that. Mm. Wouldn't you? Like, I think that'd be really cool. I, I would like to see what kind of game it is. Like, um, do we know any details on it yet? No. Okay. I would definitely like to try it. I'm into. And it's even hard to speculate because we don't play Dark Souls. All I can go off is like the setting. Mm. But, the setting is really nice. Yeah. Cool. That's <laughs> a quick one. Yeah. Um, We're getting to them. Yeah. The next thing, uh, World of Warcraft has officially, um, I believe they gave a cease and desist to the owners of a privately owned, like, original WoW server. That's right. So, a lot of fans of World of Warcraft, they like playing vanilla WoW experience. And Mm -hmm. Blizzard have actually set a date. Uh, Oh, no. It has already been disconnected. Sorry. It already got laid to rest. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and that, and apparently that had fifteen, oh, sorry, one hundred and fifty thousand active accounts on that mm-hmm. vanilla server. That's how many people were loving. 
Mm-hmm. Right, so a bunch of players jumped on on the um, the last couple of minutes of the server to have a little bit of a goodbye party, I guess you'd say. Mm-hmm. And um, wow, there was a lot of people that jumped on. Apparently 18,000 yeah, individual players were on at yeah. the last <laughs> and everyone's complaining about how like like that's like a fuck thing for blizzard to do but at the same time like you know it's fair enough like they aren't they aren't supposed to have that server there but like it means so much to the players yeah it's it's tough like if, if as, blizzard... a wow, as an avid wow player what do you think about that <laughs> i haven't played any um but if it'd be a different story if blizzard were the one running the server um oh yeah so so the fact that it's privately done i think blizzard are a bit worried about mm-hmm. it um be, i guess being managed incorrectly possibly giving wrong like people thinking no that, it's because they don't need to pay to use it oh really that was their problem with they weren't getting any money out of that server i did not know i thought you still had to have a wow subscription to use it no you don't oh because it's vanilla okay well that makes a lot of sense then yeah smart business move uh-huh. Um, <laughs> the lawyers um, thought that one. Up. I think I think it'd be like uh, apparently there are there is people launching a petition to get Blizzard to open Fuck up some off. legacy servers. Um, yeah, it'd be they not- should they should take this as an opportunity to see what the community wants. You know, like open your eyes, Blizzard, and see the truth. You know. Yeah, like if if Blizzard were actually able to launch a a first party vanilla server. Mm-hmm. then I think that would probably see a lot more people come back because a lot of people have, from what I've talked to, they like they apparently like Vanilla WoW or the early days of WoW. Yeah. It might just be a nostalgic thing. As people thing. do. Well, yeah, that goes for anything really, like the good old days, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of sad to see that happen, but it is something that... Such is life. Yeah, I mean... They if, close down the place. They, they put, close down the Halo 2 server. They close down the Final yeah. Fantasy 1. Is this the end of WoW? No, what I do don't think? think so. <laughs> I think the their numbers have been the subscription numbers have been they have, steady decline. They have. Um, there is a new expansion coming out soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and normally, what happens with Blizzard is they'll get a big influx of people buying it, playing it, and then they're done with it in like a month. So, I mean, they're still getting the game purchase and at least one or two months of subscription fees out mm-hmm. of people. That's just um, what makes MMO so weird for me because I've never yeah. really been a big MMO kind of guy. I've played a few, but no, yeah. never like grabbed onto one, you know, and really yeah. got sucked into it. Like when I was younger, we played RuneScape. Oh, of course. Like, yeah, that's um, the number one. one uh, I actually, using that as a slight segue, um, something else I quickly read was um, also this week about the whole news of Blizzard shutting down their vanilla servers. RuneScape have been running vanilla servers for the past couple of years. Oh, guys, um, so they actually have been running. Uh, I think they call it RuneScape Old mm-hmm. School, um, which you can pretty much run the game exactly how you did in 2007, mm-hmm. uh, and they've just been supporting it still. They haven't really added anything new to it because since That's the idea, isn't it? Let's yeah, get don't add new stuff to it. Yeah, yeah. So since since uh, the old version of RuneScape, they've added. Graphic upgrades, combat upgrades, and a bunch of other stuff, and it's it's we've we've played it, you and me, just to give it a go, and it's for weird. a laugh we do. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Um, so yeah, old school RuneScape. The only thing is, I noticed that um, they don't have the Australian service for old school RuneScape anymore. Oh really? Um, but I was checking it out just previously, and currently, thirty five thousand people are playing old school RuneScape still. There you go. The writing is on the wall. Yeah. World of Warcraft players yep. trying to jump, jump the sinking ship. Yep, like the rats you are, and start straight, playing RuneScape straight into the clunky Java interface of RuneScape. See you at boys in the wildy. Yeah, one v one me. See you there. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the um, one of the devs of RuneScape actually released an article on LinkedIn saying that how. The success of RuneScape is still down to its legacy mode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like the opposite of WoW, of what WoW have done. Shutting down old stuff, where this one there, yep. keeping it there. I'm sure they'll find the answer eventually. Yeah. Speaking of terrible developers. <laughs> yep. Um, so, I think today, 
uh, today, the uh, Saturday, the sixteenth of April, Super here in new. here in uh, Australia. Um, good old Dean Hall, aka Rocket. Rocket. Um, now you may know him from. Uh, was it Infestation Survivor Stories? Was it no, War Z? Was, was it Rust? Uh, Rust. Uh, Minecraft. Uh, no, it was uh, Daisy. 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 That's right. That's so right. Z stands for zombie. What? I think. Oh, okay. Or is it Daisy, like the name, like the flower, Daisy? I think it's Daisy. Yeah. Um. So, people... so the game that never got finished and it never will because no. they all abandoned it. So the he's got a new game coming out. Yeah, so you may remember the old. You never played original Daisy, did you? No, I only played the standalone, so, so, and it's it's got. I'll never buy into no so early what, access again. It was bit my hand too hard. So what happened was this guy was working for the company that made Armor, then made this mod. Mm-hmm. The mod then got heavily supported by the creators of Armor. Mm-hmm. Um, again, the full history lesson on Daisy. Yeah. Now I love the game. It was fun when I played it back in the day. Then they were like, oh, we're going to make a standalone, you know? So they've made, they've released the standalone in early access about... Uh, ages ago. I guess I can... two years ago, it feels oh, like. Now. Two, at least three years two years ago. ago. Um, since then, Rocket went, well, the Daisy's in development. Fuck this, I'm out. And left the Daisy <laughs> devs to do their the own thing. Guy, yeah. uh, even though he was the one who started it all. Um, <laughs> he's now released, or he's now released a trailer... And has his game on early access. No, the game is out. Yeah, so um, it's called Out of Ammo. Uh, it launched today on early access, and the trailer. Only well. for the Vive. It's a it's a VR game. Which is interesting. It looks kind of cool ish. It has a very uh, I'd say it kind of it somewhat looks like unturned kind of graphic style you think everything it's just a voxel shooter man yeah voxel shooter um everything's a bit blocky uh, yep but i will admit that the trailer did make me want to play it It, like it looked pretty cool like it's like a half fps shoot bad guys uh in like sort of urban rural environments Mm. uh and then there's the strategy element as well where you can place down like barricades and turrets and stuff like that yeah, and with it being using the VR, yeah, with it being floaty hand. in Vive, yeah, you've you've got full control over your two hands, mm-hmm. so you can actually kind of shoot around stuff. And it looks it looks pretty fun to play. It'd be definitely worth checking out. It's Fifteen if, bucks, and it's on early access, so don't play it because <laughs> don't give this man your money because he should finish his other games before. Well, he has nothing to do with those anymore. Yeah, but he should. He, he should have finished them before he left. I uh, gave him my money. I gave him my money multiple times. Um, That's why I don't screw with early access unless it's under five no. bucks. The the only tough thing is, I guess, with VR being new, is mm-hmm. early access for VR. And Vive only. Um, I think early access and VR kind of are okay just because virtual reality being a new thing, mm-hmm. it'd be nice for the developers to actually have more of a... There's no excuse for early access, my man. Oh, okay. You, you finish, hate your, it. finish your games. But finish your games. he needs people to tell him what's good about it. And especially if it's VR. Finish your games. Okay. Cool. So on to next thing. So we've got um, semi-interesting. So Target Australia mm-hmm. um, have just released a... I don't know how this list actually got released, but I believe it was to do with Oz Bargain which mm-hmm. is an Australian like bargain hunting website. Um, so they've released a sale on pretty much every video game related product they sell. Nice. Um, so you've got like consoles down to 350 bucks and things like that. Um, lots of things, lots and lots of things on sale. Uh, one of the Wii things, well, everything. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I saw in there actually is there's a PSP 3000 for sale for $1. What? Um, but it's not available online and it won't tell you what store it's in. Okay, you just got to go find it. <laughs> you just got to go find it. Uh, Epic um, Quest for the PSP. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much everything is on sale by at least 10, if not more percent. Um, I mean, you've got stuff for like a dollar, five dollars. Is this Target Australia? Yeah. Oh man, Mortal Kombat X, 30 bucks right yeah. there. Oh. Well, Combat XL, so you have to go check it out. Um, mm. The 
what's this what this made me think is um quite like Kmart have done or are trying to do um I think a lot of the big box retailers like Target, Big W, possibly Big W and Kmart are slowly trying to get themselves out of the console or at least the gaming market. Mm-hmm. Um, Liquidating, huh? I think that's what's happening, yeah, because you've seen like, I know Dick Smith in the a couple of years ago, they stopped selling Nintendo completely. Um, Kmart apparently are slowly dropping out. I don't think what happened to Dick Smith. Well, yeah, but I don't see any new game content or game in uh came up anymore it's all old stuff really? okay. um and now target are seeming like they're going to sell everything up and close down their gaming yep. console division what can i say video games are dying <laughs> i don't think it's that i think with people preferring to go to like eb games even jb hi-fi but aren't eb games like not doing so well these days either I think a lot of the physical releases aren't There's doing only well. so much. It's like pop vinyls are like the magic, the gathering of comic stores. You know? <laughs> yeah. I said that wrong, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the only thing keeping comic stores afloat these days is people coming in and buying magic, the gathering shit. It's just like people coming in to get their pop vinyls and they think keeping video games. Pop vinyls and pre-orders, yeah. Mm. Um, the, the one thing that saddens me over over this is... Not so much that I can't buy from Target anymore, but that I can't use Target as a price match for EB. <laughs> <laughs> like Target always had a cheaper price, yeah. But I would always prefer buying from EB Games just because because they've got you got that card and that point system, yeah. That you don't yeah. even need. But um, so it's kind of sad. But get in while you can. Check out your local Target store. Yep. Buy the video games before they start making them all together. Yeah. Buy as they, many as you can, then resell them for full retail price. Yes, that's right. It's a little trick from us to you. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. But how long has it been since you've bought a physical game from Target or Big W, say? Uh, I used to do it back in the day. Mm. Like, oh, man. Like before like, EB Games was such a big deal or...? Yeah, like I knew you could always get them cheaper there, but I didn't really put it into practice much. No, I, just, I got just got used to buying from EB because yeah. I knew they'd have all the games there. Yeah, true. I guess, even though they charge a little bit more sometimes, it's it's just nice because you go in and it's a nice atmosphere because it's all video mm-hmm. games. I think I I used to buy them from. Uh, st- Places like Target and Kmart back when I was buying like new release games, which was like back in high school. Yeah, yeah. I've um, I bought some stuff from like I bought my Wii U from Big W, mm-hmm. uh, but it was mainly based on price and availability. Mm-hmm. Um, but recently, I've always gone into Big W, taken a photo of the game, walked into EB Games, and told them to match it. Yeah, it's all I've you been can doing. do that from JB as well. Yeah, true. Yeah, kind of sad to see physical media. Well, that's only speculation that that's what's happening. That's true. That's Did true. you see the thing about Dick Smith where they found some PlayStation 1 um, Link cables? cables? Yeah. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah, apparently they were from the old... Uh, from when Dick Smith bought a bunch of stock from Maya. Oh, is that where it came from? So that's yeah, how it like, came from somewhere else. That's how old they have been. Like They've come from Maya through Dick Smith and obviously sat in the back room. Yeah, in Perth somewhere. Yeah. That's great. I'd totally snag one. <laughs> so oh, fuck yeah, yeah. If only they had light guns. Oh. Amazing. Cool. Well, there you go. All right. So uh, next up, we got uh, a little bit of a story about Stardew Valley. Do you remember Stardew Valley, Shane? I remember it a bit. I have wanted to play it. Mm, it's uh, like the, the hot new game. I guess you'd say it's the player of the month. Or was it last month? Uh, it's been out for two months. Two months a now, month and a half, yeah. going strong. It just hit one million purchases. Yeah. Stardew Valley is a game. Basically, uh, do you remember Harvest Moon from back in the day? It's like a farming game where you just run a farm and yeah. have relations with people and such. I never got it's to not, play that either, but I, no, I remember. It's a, it's a nice little comfy game. And like, I suppose the dev of this game were like, hmm, there hasn't been a good Harvest Moon game come out in like ages. We'll just make our, our own. Yeah. And call it Stardew Valley, and we'll put it out and we'll sell a million copies. And there you go. They did it. Yeah. And they did not put it out on early access, by the way. 
I did? Oh. I actually finished that game when it came out. Wow. <laughs> actually, I'm not sure if that's true. <laughs> I can never be sure. But yeah, congrats to them. Oh, yeah, definitely. And you know, Is I'd... 1 million even a good score anymore? I mean, it's, it's pretty high. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Especially for an indie dev. Mm. Um, oh, that, that really, it doesn't strike me as that would be their first game, though. Oh, it still doesn't mean they're not indie. No, but I mean, like... Oh, it's their only game on Steam. Yeah? Yeah. Well, good. I want to play it. Yeah, definitely. I would love to play it. I've been hearing a lot of cool stories about what you can do. All kinds of cool stuff you can do in that game. Yeah, it's Windows only, though. Mm -hmm. Bit of a shame, yeah. but... um, yeah. Maybe they'll make another one. It seems like a kind of game that I would have thought would launch on Steam Play, like for everyone to play. Yeah. Um, Guess not indie devs, huh? What can you do? Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. It's definitely got a really nice uh, pixel art to it. Yeah, like the art looks really gorgeous, and I think it's got like the whole season changing thing stuff going on in it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's probably, um, it kind of reminds me of that feeling, like looking at screenshots and kind of what you can do in the game. It reminds me of that feeling of when I first saw Minecraft and was like, wow, I can like all the stuff I can farm and build and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the farming element obviously is actually a lot better than Minecraft's farming oh, element. Oh yeah, well that's the focus of the game. Yeah. It looks cool. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Check it out, yeah. One million, one million. Um, I actually heard as well, apparently the um, Shovel Knight has only just hit one million Purchased really? as well, yeah. On what though? Because it's like ported everywhere now. So. May have just been on Steam as well, but yeah. Yeah, I got the Steam version. I have not got any version. Yeah, it's not like uh, it's good in this way that they ported it so much, but like at the same time, it's like uh, because mm. I guess I would either have it on the computer or I'd have it on the 3DS so I could have it portable. Yeah, are you with me? But like the cool thing is that they have um different exclusive content for each port. Yeah. Which I couldn't tell you what they are. One of them has multiplayer and some don't. I can't tell you which one's doing don't. I think I really the, need to finish that game. I think the Nintendo sometimes. ones have multiplayer. Okay. Because they've only just launched it on Wii U like a couple months back. Mm. And that's the, the newest version. Great game. Yeah. And that's about all the news for this week for yeah. the podcast. Uh, as always, feel free to write in to us. Yep, we have we a mailbag. Desperately waiting for your email. Yep, you can send in anything, asking questions, feedback. Send us all your hate, please. All your hate in one. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll accept anything mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, so you can send that through to <clears throat> Matt Shane Video Game at gmail.com. We look forward to it. Yep, it'll be linked. Uh, there'll be a link for it in the description. If Until you then. Check that out. Yeah, check it out. Until then, goodbye.